I'm Gary Bembridge. This is another of my cruising tips for travelers. I want to share with you some tips, some secrets, some ways that you can ensure you get the very best cabin on a cruise ship, no matter what grade of cabin you're cruising in. These are things that have worked for me and I use them every time I go on a cruise. So let's take a look at these seven critical things to think about, starting with this one. The first thing to do is to go for a fare where you can select the cabin rather than go for a guaranteed cabin. A guaranteed fare cabin is where you basically buy a grade. So you buy, say, an inside, an ocean view, a balcony, a suite, whatever grade it is, and you let the cruise line choose and allocate the cabin for you. On many cruise lines, that's a slightly cheaper fare. It's not the case all the time, but I would strongly recommend if you want to get and ensure that you have a great cabin, you go for a fare where you select the grade yourself. If you go for a guaranteed cabin, you're going to be allocated the leftover cabins once people who've perhaps used these tips have chosen the very best cabin. So you may get a cabin that is not considered a particularly good cabin and certainly people in the know won't have chosen those cabins. It's the leftover cabins. So that's the first really key thing. Make sure that you have the option of choosing the cabin yourself. The second thing to do is to try and focus as much as you can on the middle of the ship, so midship, and certainly lower down as you possibly can. The reason that is really important is if you're worried about motion sickness, for example, that is where there is the least amount of motion in the ship is in the middle of the ship. So that's one reason that people like midships. There's another even more practical reason. If you're in the middle of the ship, you're going to be equidistant from all of the key activities. So for example, you'll find things like the theater or the fitness or the crow's nest are at the front of the ship, sort of at the bow of the ship. And then often the dining venues are at the rear of the ship, so at the stern of the ship. So actually, if you're in the middle of the ship, you're kind of equidistant from many of the key attractions. And often you can head down onto the promenade deck or wherever, and you're going to be right in the heart of things. You'll often find things like guest services are in the slap bank, the center of the ship. So that's another reason for being midships. It's going to be a great location for accessing everything on the ship. My next tip is probably the most important of all of the tips and the one absolute thing to remember is choose a cabin that's surrounded on all sides by other cabins. So you have a cabin above you, you have cabins below you, you have cabins either side of you. And importantly, ideally you have cabins opposite you. Now, if you don't have a cabin opposite you, make sure you can understand from the deck plans what is actually opposite you. So you're not actually building in something which is going to be potentially problematic once you get on board. The advantage with that is you then are pretty much guaranteed that you're not going to be near a particularly noisy venue like the nightclub or underneath the kitchens which could be really noisy or underneath the theatre which could be running late at night with events. So you're basically going to buffer yourself against any potential interruptions. So you can have a good night's sleep if uh, even if you're out partying really late and all you want to lie in. So that's a really important tip. The next thing to do is once you've chosen that cabin surrounded on all sides, is have a look what's actually on that deck. Are there any big facilities or venues on that deck? So you might have the kids club close to you on that deck. You might have the guest laundry or you might have the entrance to one of the bars or the theater or whatever nearby. So just have a think about the volume of traffic. One of the things that a lot of people identify in this area is elevators. So if you've got the elevators there, you can often find that's a real point where people are gonna be coming and going often talking and you know making a racket or running around or whatever. So also then have a look at the actual deck that you've chosen is are there any big traffic areas that are going to be moving around causing disruptions. Another thing that I look at really really carefully is once you've also looked at the cabin make sure that it's not an interconnected cabin. So in other words there's not a door to the cabin next to you. Now of course if you're cruising with other people and you want that that's a very different story. The disadvantage of having an interconnected door is it can be a cause of real problems. So if you've got people next door who are real party people and you're not a party person or they listen to their television really loudly really early, they get up really early in the morning and they put on their television or they fight a lot or whatever, that noise does travel in a lot. And some of the worst experiences I've had when I've been cruising is actually when I've had a cabin with interconnecting doors for whatever reason. So that's one thing to really look at. Your final deck plans, those are normally well marked. The thing I often get asked is, should I go for a port side or a starboard side cabin? Pretty much in most itineraries, it's irrelevant because the ship can actually dock either way. So you actually don't know in the different ports of call whether the ship's actually going to dock 
port side or dock starboard side. There are a couple of cruises where it could be important. So for example, if you're on a transatlantic cruise sailing into New York and you're going to be sailing past the Statue of Liberty, the advantage of being on the port side, which is the left side, as you sail into New York early in the morning, it means the Statue of Liberty is going to be there as you sail past. You don't necessarily have to clamber out and head out onto the deck to see the Statue of Liberty, particularly if you're in a balcony cabin. Obviously, if you're sailing out of New York, you then might want to be on the starboard side because you're going to be sailing down past the Statue of Liberty on the other side. Some of the Alaska itineraries, it could be a good idea to choose either port or starboard. So for example, if you're heading from the south up to the north, you might want to be on the starboard side, the right-hand side. If you're heading the other way down, you want to be on the port side, the left-hand side, because most of the coast is going to be on that side. If you're heading into something like an inside passage in Alaska, it's less important because you're kind of heading up and heading back down and it becomes less important. If you're heading through the Panama Canal, for example, if you're on the starboard side, the right-hand side, and you're heading up the Panama Canal, it means the other leg of the canal is always on the other side to you, so you get to see the ships heading up and down on that side. Port and starboard, I find, generally speaking, I don't pay a lot of attention to anymore. Another critical thing that I also do to ensure that I have a great cabin, I'm very happy with my cabin, is I never ever take the auto upgrade. Now when you do a booking you're often asked if you would accept an auto upgrade. I rather focus on making sure I've got a cabin that I absolutely love. So I spent my money and I've got a cabin that I know I'm going to be really happy with and I say no to the auto upgrade. Bear in mind if you get an auto upgrade pretty much every single cruise line will let, not let you have any say in that cabin. They just will move you to a cabin, allocate your cabin. So again you're going to be with the leftover, the, the last kind of remaining cabins in that grade above you. Now clearly I guess if you're going from a balcony up into a suite there's a good chance that they're all going to be great but you just don't know. So I never take an auto upgrade and I've had lots of people contact me with experiences where they had a cabin they're very happy with, they took the auto upgrade and then they really didn't enjoy their time because they didn't like the cabin for whatever reason. Those are my tips on how to get a great cabin on a cruise and Hopefully they'll help you ensure no matter whether you're traveling inside, ocean view, balcony, suite, that you have a fabulous cabin and you have an even more fabulous cruise knowing that you're in a cabin that is just perfect for you. I have loads more videos packed full of advice and tips on cabins, on cruises. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?